Hi, uh, I want to do a couple of videos here, um, and this is one of two videos that I want to do today, which are uh, about this right here, this book, Ethics of, of Ambiguity by Simone de, de Beauvoir. Um, if you are interested in any kind of existentialism, then if you, I, I think it's necessary to read this um, because, not only because, um, there's some really interesting ex existentialist, uh, concepts in this book, but there's also, um, she reflects on a lot of philosophers before her, she, re she reflects on Jean-Paul Sartre, she, re she reflects on Karl Marx, um, Hegel, uh, Nietzsche, you know, she, 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 she reflects on a lot, I mean, she, um, this is it's a good she she looks at she looks at her concepts and then she kind of goes goes back upon others and you know sort of thinks about those and thinks about why you know why this is you know correct or not um, and then uh, also if you are also interested in existentials and not only should you read this but you should also read this Jean Paul Sartre being in no, no, nothingness. This is a. This is one of the best texts of, of, of existentialism. Um, among that, um, among the, um, among the 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 Jean, Jean Paul Sartre and the De Beauvoir, um, this is good for. Ex for existentialism, he did not actually um, put himself in that camp, but he, you know, turns out to be that way because of his concepts like uh, um, of design and being as care, temporality, you know, all that is uh, a lot. A lot has to do with existentialist concepts. And what I want to, what I want to, what I want to talk about today was one of the biggest, one of the bigger, you know things that are said in this book here. Um, pretty much it's called Ethics of Ambiguity because it refers to the ambiguity of one's life it ref or, 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 the, or the common person's life. It refers to it refers to what one should do given this uh, given these you know this given this absurdity and Ambiguity of lives. Um, to 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 you know quickly you know to really sort of you know somewhat get into the ambiguity that she discusses in this book. Um, a good way to 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 discuss it would be to say that each one of us we have this certain internal drive towards certain what she would call projects, or like a project would mean like. Um, graduating or um, getting a getting a prom promotion or something like that or writing a book, you know, stuff, stuff like that. Those are projects. She says that each one of us has a s spontaneous internal drive, spontaneous internal drives towards certain actions, towards certain projects and, and completion and com completion of those projects. But on the other hand, there's an, an external weight of the world which weighs down on that internal drive and that on that internal drive of ours and that creates that's where the the idea of this ambiguity comes from because we have this drive this spontaneous internal drive which which by itself would be good it's good it's a good thing to have that it's a good thing to you know have this spontaneous internal internal drive to do all these projects, you know, it's, it, or you know, just, just to, to uh, advance in your own, in your life, you know, by by itself, that is a good thing to have. But then, on the other hand, she says that there is an external weight of the world, which um, puts all its weight on top of that internal on top of that internal drive of yours. Um, and she, she says that this is a ambiguous paradoxical existence and 
what she says is that there's a certain like in the in this book. In this book, you will you would read about things you you one of the biggest things in existentialist thought is the idea of bad faith. Um, in this book, you will um, what what will be discussed is the idea of the being for itself and the being for others, and how both of those are um, are in a state where you're not it, where it's it's you know it's sort of like you are that but you aren't. Um, it's like a being. A being for others is um, that is denying a lot of things about yourself. If you are in that, if you are in that category, so bad faith is is, is essentially um, not admitting to certain, um, not not admitting to yourself certain truths. And De Beauvoir discusses, you know, the, the idea of you know that there, there's bad faith and the idea that. Um, there's bad faith in the idea that, given this amb this this ambiguity of our life, there's bad faith in the in the instance where a person, you know, um, doesn't recognize or accept that, and you know you know does these things to try to mask it or <coughs> does what the person can to uh, make that seem worse, make that seem less bad. At Less work, less bad than it, than it is, um, or to make you know, to make the world have some sort of you know meaning to it, or try to reject this this ambiguity and you know this paradox, and that's bad faith because it's just, just like in Heidegger in this book, he um, he discusses a being toward death. Being toward death would be. Um, recognizing that you are going to, you know, not, um, you are not, you're not going to, uh, be here forever, and, and, and there's, there's going to be a time where you're not, where you're going to expire, and, uh, that is, you know, one of the harder concepts that we, you know, we have, go away. That's you know a certain that's a similar concept like there's a similar there's similar concepts like in there's similar there's a uh, similar concept in uh, Albert Camus which is a sort of it's he he discusses a certain absurdity and uh, you know between those between those there's certain things that one has to accept you know as to as to not be in a, a situation of bad faith. But my question, you know, given this, you know, I, I think it's very interesting to think about this. It's very interesting to think about um, this this ambiguity and to think about whether whether you know if is this you know is this sort is this sort of thing real? Is it is our our lives ambiguous or absurd or paradoxical? And I would say. Yes, because David, uh, I mean, if, if, if I were to ask David Benatar, a, a, a antinatalist who wrote uh, but Better Never to Have Been, The Harm of, of Coming Into Existence, he would say that, yeah, it's um, the existence of people is absurd because there's so much, so much suffering, and I would, you know, sort of, Look at the kind of suffering, and you know some things that are going to stop you from. They're, they're going to stop you from carrying out the the projects that you want to spontaneously choose to do within that internal drive of yours. And I would say that you know, looking at that book, the book "Better Never to Have Been" by David Benatar, um, he shows a lot of suffering. He shows a lot of suffering in the world. He shows a lot of reasons why coming into existence is a harm. And he discusses a lot of things like that. And he discusses um, why we should stop having kids because it's it's a it's a it's a imposition to bring them here without without their choosing to be here. And uh, I guess um, 
So, so the real the real question here is, are is life itself ambiguous because of you know all of the let's you know let's say you're trying to get promoted or something or you know and then so, you know you you're working hard and you're trying to you know do this you're trying to get, get you're trying to get that promotion after you know a couple of years or so of not of you know of working up towards it and then you, and then and then it comes up and then nothing. Then I would say that would kind of cause the collapse and failure of that project to get to get to work hard to get promoted, and that would you know sort of be an example I would say of crushing the internal drive that people have. So I would say yeah, um, there's a big ambiguity of life of life in the world, but then um, the way of but then I guess there, there's lots of there's lots of d d different ways of remedying that, and I guess I'm a, I'm a I'm a I'm a Christian. I would still say that life is ambiguous. There there's lots of, lots of things in life that are ambiguous, um, but that's only to you know at the surface of what I think. What I would think is that there's at, that on when you look at life, you know, tableau rise object objectively. You know, without any pre presupposed bias, you're gonna say that yeah, this is you know ambiguous bullshit. You know, this is sort of you know why why would anybody want to bring their kids into this world? You know, you know this is this is this is this is terrible. And Christians like myself are going to have we're gonna have this opinion which we will not uh, often discuss that. There's a way to make it seem less ambiguous than it is, or, you know, that most will come to identify the world the world as unambiguous. But that's you know a complex thing, which I think would, you know, take a lot of, you know, a lot of work, especially for someone who is, you know, who comes as not religious and then becomes religious later for some for for whatever reason. But that I would say, you know, having some some sort of religion would be the only way to to come to view this world as unambiguous. So, other than that one statement, that you know that Christians have come to a belief that the world is unambiguous and that there, there, there that there's purposes for things. That's the only way that you're gonna ever come to not think of the world as as ambiguous.